Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember what reward stickers are? They are those small smiley shaped stickers or a star shaped sticker that the teacher would give you if you excelled in an exam. Remember how happy that would make you? Guess what? Today you have a chance to relive that childhood memory. You see, all of y'all have some reward stickers with you. Now you don't get to wear it for free. These are wearable reward stickers, but you don't get to wear it for free. You have to pass a test. And as you would suspect, it's a fitness test. So come join me and let's take the fitness test together. But if you have bad knees or a bad back, then maybe you can sit out on this one. So you all are sitting down. I'll just join you. So now we're all sitting. Keep your back straight, hands straight over the head. Lift your left foot two inches above the ground. And now keep your weight on the right foot and stand up and balance yourself. Very good. Excellent. So those who could do it, you all have passed the test. In fact, you've aced the test. Now, everyone else, don't feel bad. Those who couldn't do it, those who wobble, those who sat down again. We, this is for you. We'll sit down again. Again, both our hands up. And this time, with both feet on the ground, let's stand up on the count of three. One, two, three. Excellent. So if you couldn't do it, it means you failed this test for now. But the good news is, through spending time and effort, you too can ace this test in some time. But before we get to that, I'm going to discuss something with you that is very important and a crucial reason why people fail to keep fit. And that is a perception that fitness is black or white. That either you're sick, and if you're not sick, it means you're fit. There could be nothing further from the truth. Instead, I would rather you discard this belief and look at fitness as a spectrum. So in this spectrum, everyone's fitness is somewhere on the spectrum. The left side of the spectrum, the red and orange side, is the danger zone. The extreme right side is the purple and indigo side. And those who are experiencing the pink of health, and those who passed this test, aced it, are on the extreme right side. And everyone else is in between. Now your goal is to stay out of the extreme left side. So for the sake of this example, let's assume your fitness is a ball on the spectrum. Now your goal is to push this ball further right. But the bad news is that you're not pushing the ball on a flat surface. Instead, you're pushing it on an inclined surface, which means once you've moved it further right, if you think, OK, I've reached my fitness goal, now I can put my hands up and move away, that ball will start rolling left again and again till you fall deep into the red zone. So your goal is quite simple. It's to stay out of the red zone if you're there. And if you're outside the red zone already, to make sure that you're not doing anything which will push you back into it. So what is it about the red zone that is so bad that I'm insisting that stay out of it, put in time, put in effort, make sure you don't fall back into it. You have to understand that common to the red zoners are that they are physically inactive. And today we know that physical inactivity is a prime contributor to a host of conditions that come under non-communicable diseases. As I call them, lifestyle diseases. These could be anything. Diabetes, hypertension, hypothyroid, obesity, back pain, neck pain, sleep issues, anxiety, stress, sexual issues, and much more sinister conditions also, like lung cancer and even heart attacks. In fact, a study published in the journal Lancet in 2012 showed that 10% of fatal heart attacks happening in the younger age group was due to physical inactivity. And that is just the death toll of it. Think about it in the sense of what about the morbidity, not the mortality, the morbidity, the affection on the quality of life. Those who aren't physically active in their 30s, 40s, and 50s have a poorer quality of life in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, those crucial post-retirement years when you're supposed to enjoy, uh, travel the world, dance at your granddaughter's wedding, instead of that, you spend it having a bunch of pills and depending on a group of people for support. So today, the question for you that you have to answer is, are you physically inactive? 
are you a red zoner and this may be a little bit difficult to answer because everyone has different levels of activity and there's it's subjective there's no objectivity so i'll help you out bring some objectivity to this question i'll ask you one question and if the answer is yes it means you are physically inactive and you are a red zoner the question is do you sit for more than 9 hours a day it could be studying it could be work it could be leisure irrespective if you sit for more than 9 hours a day it doesn't matter how active you are in the rest of the time chances are you are not going to get in the physical activity required to stay fit in fact sitting is so dangerous not just because of the morbidity that we spoke about also because it crushes the spine that it is now called the new smoking and one of the most unfortunate parts of the pandemic has been that we have normalized sitting and we have become a nation of sitters now so today we will start our journey towards optimizing our physical health my journey for physical health began 20 years ago when i started medical school and i also started my personal fitness journey and over the years whenever i meet someone i always motivate them to exercise a little bit and to push them towards the fitness method now everyone comes from a different fitness level and it's difficult for them to get one advice and so i developed a hierarchy of fitness a stratified approach in which wherever you are you can pick out exactly where you are and start your fitness journey now this stratified approach starts from the base level 1 2 3 4 and finally 5 now the base level is the easiest level it's as simple as since sitting is so bad sit less move more every half an hour or 45 minute of sitting just get up stretch a little bit go for a small walk every 2 3 hours you've been sitting get up move your pelvis around and if when you're sitting make sure you're sitting with good posture and sitting right you see we have over 600 muscles and 300 joints all with the intent to make us move and sitting is absolutely unnatural to us now crossing level 1 comes level 2 and this is the level of movement the simple activity of moving even 100 years back if you had to do some social activity or if you had to go to the bazaar to pick up some groceries chances are you would walk quite a bit and this is called incidental walking where your intent is to do an activity and you end up naturally moving around but because we live in the modern world in the lap of luxury where everything is convenient you can open your phone you can order food in you can do your work online you can socialize online you can do everything online and so our incidental activity levels have plummeted today activity needs to be intentional where you tell yourself i am going to walk because walking is not natural coming to us naturally anymore so how do you intentionally walk where do you start the simplest thing you can do is use modern technology to support your goals start measuring how much you move every single day through any app that tracks your movement if you see you move 10 2000 steps a day then your goal is simple let's move a little bit more by next week a little bit more the week after that a little bit more the month after that till you get to 10000 steps and when you do you know you've crossed level 2 that you're out of the red zone you're out of the danger zone but today we're talking about optimizing our physical health not just staying out of the danger zone not just passing but doing a lot more and the next level level 3 is yoga it's mobility exercises and we are talking about mobility of the joints in and around the spine so the hip joints the scapular thoracic joints the shoulder joints and the spine itself now you don't have to intentionally le- learn how to mobilize each of them all you have to do is just start learning yoga and all of this happens on its own once you do that the fourth level is cardiovascular exercise now that you're moving enough you want to make sure you're moving enough fast enough for a specific amount of time every single day so 45 minutes of elevated heart rate is the goal at this level and you can do that through zumba you can do that through movement therapy you can do that by swimming gymming skipping you choose and pick the world is your oyster the amount of options 
is incredible. You just choose and you pick. And the final level of your fitness hierarchy is strengthening the muscles because the muscles are extremely important for our quality of life. And this is progressive strengthening, which means today if you do five push-ups, tomorrow you should aim a little bit more. And after two months, you should aim a little bit more and slowly and steadily get stronger. Now, when I began my fitness journey almost 20 years back, this is what I had developed to make sure that most people can understand what the hierarchy of fitness is and learn how to stay fit. But over the last few years, I've realized through showing this hierarchy to patients and then coming back and telling me that they are still unable to keep up with it, I've realized that the failures are not because of lack of knowledge anymore. In fact, knowledge and information is everywhere. We have abundance of information. You just go onto YouTube, there's fitness experts, fitness gurus telling you exactly what exercises to do, how to do elevate your heart rate, but yet the failures are still happening. Today's failures are because of one and one reason only, which is the primary reason. And ask yourself, why have you failed in the last few years if you had a fitness goal too? And the answer will come immediately back. It is because you don't have the time. Now, how are you going to exercise if you don't have the time? The truth is, when someone tells you that they don't have the time, or you tell yourself that my routine is just packed, there's just no time for this. The truth is, what they're telling you is not that they don't have the time. It actually means they don't have the desire. Because we somehow manage time for whatever we desire. And that brings the next question. Why don't you desire this? Why is the motivation lacking? At which there are two forms of motivation, which is very important to understand. One is external motivation. If you feel motivated after my talk, it is because it's external motivation. I have said something that has triggered something in you, and now you're inspired. But within 48 hours, this motivation will fail, and it will pass away. It will go back with time, and you will forget this, and so will your motivation go away. Another example of external motivation is, how many of you all have watched the Rocky IV movie? Absolutely, every time you watch the Rocky IV movie, you feel like getting up and doing push-ups. That's external motivation too. And then, after some time, that fades away, and you go back to your old life. But internal motivation is something that never goes away. Internal motivation is that student who comes from a poor family, who sat under the street lamp, opened his books, and studied for the IIT exam day in, day out, till he cleared it and took his whole family out of poverty. How did he do it? It is because he had internal motivation. And internal motivation is what you need to find. You need to ask yourself, why am I setting myself on the fitness journey? If you don't start the fitness journey, there's no problem. But if you are going to do it, before you do that, ask yourself why. And ask yourself why a few times. If the first answer that comes to your head is, because I want to lose weight, ask yourself, why do you want to lose weight? And another because will come. Ask yourself, why? And you will find your internal motivation very soon. I will leave you with three things. A quote, a goal, and a request. My quote for you is, motivation is what gets you started, but habit is what keeps you going. The goal for you is very simple then. Make sure you have an internal motivation strong enough till your lifestyle choices become a habit. And at that time, it doesn't become an effort anymore. It becomes as simple as brushing your teeth every day in the morning. Who enjoys brushing their teeth? Almost no one, but yet we do it. Your lifestyle journey will become easy only when it becomes a habit. And finally, I'll leave you with a request. And my request is, if you are going to give me a round of applause, don't do it sitting. Thank you. <laughs>